So the hardest part about this sale preview was choosing a limited number of items to actually fit on the table for you. Um, as you can see, it's a bit uh, crowded this time, but that's because we have a ridiculously large and amazing selection of jewellery, watches and silver to go through. Um, we'll give you mostly an overview of what we've got here, um, but there are a few things that I'd definitely like to go into a few more detail in. Um, and one of the main things here is that Due to the gold price being so high, there is so much gold coming into auction at the moment and it's attaining really good prices. But equally, there are some lovely pieces that we're having in at the moment. Um, we'll start on the watches though, uh, as that's the first section in the day on Tuesday at 9.30 in the morning to start. Um, and the first lot we have is lot number one. And this is a Rolex Submariner with a black dial and bezel. It's on its original stainless steel bracelet, it's got its box and also another uh, NATO strap to go with it. Um, but this watch in auction is estimated around five to seven thousand. Should certainly be that. What Rolex is definitely one of the premier names when coming to auction or any watch uh, buying for that, that respect. And um, to that essence as well, we have lot number two, which is another Rolex. This one is a GMT Master II and uh, this is what's known as the Coke version of um, a GM2, GMT Master 2. Um, that's because it has the black and red bezel on this one. Uh, and it's in virtually unworn condition. It has recently had a service, um, which obviously does include case polishing as well. Um, so it has actually been back to Rolex. Um, and I don't think it's been worn since. It's in pristine condition, this one really nice and that one comes with a box and also the service document on that one as well and the estimate on that is 8,000 to 10,000. Uh, the next watch we have here is lot number 11 from the same house as the first Rolex actually. This one is an Amiga Seamaster Professional. Uh, you see these most often in uh, advertising with James Bond, the Seamaster Professionals. And again, really nice, subtle, matte black dial on this one. Um, again, completely boxed with papers, everything to go with it. And estimate on that is uh, two to two and a half thousand. But a really nice condition. All of these uh, watches here are in very good original condition. Uh, got a few, few here, which are nice, more vintage models. So we have lot number 12 which is an Omega Seamaster Automatic. This is what they call the TV dial. It's, uh, as you can see, well, as you can see, it's, um, it's fairly self-explanatory, but a really nice 1970s model. And uh, that should be between 12 and 1600 at auction. Lot number 10 here um, is a Tudor. A bit more of a common name to come up um, against. And uh, this is the Prince Oyster Date, but most of these have a slightly smaller case. This one is known as the Jumbo version. Um, and as such, with uh, wristwatches getting larger and larger each year, uh, it's obviously a bit more of a, a prized model, that one. Uh, and then the final wristwatch we have here is lot number five, and that is the, again, another vintage Rolex. And the unusual thing about this is that it uh, has a dial that's signed by Tiffany & Co. Really unusual to have that uh, signed dial on this one, which makes it so rare. Uh, this is a normal Oyster Perpetual um, wristwatch. Generally, they make between 1,500 and 2,500. This one is estimated at 2,500 to 3,000. So a slight more, slightly more of a premium to have that Tiffany & Co. dial, but it could make a lot more than that because it's a very rare model. So some brilliant wristwatches, and that's only a selection of those. I think we've got about 80 lots of watches to go, that we have to go through on the day. Um, and then straight after that, we have a really good run of all sorts of gold coins, um, including this uh, selection here, which is a 2018 Sovereign Gold Proof set. So you've got the four coin set here, the double sovereign, sovereign half and a quarter. Um, and this one is, as I say, brand new and boxed. Um, and it comes with its original outer box and papers. And that's, uh, as I say, very good condition and they should be between 1,500 and 2,000 for an entire set like that. Um, but again, gold coins, massive investment at the moment, huge investment opportunity um, as gold is still on the rise at the moment. Um, and after that, we have, as I say, another sort of 40 or 50 sovereigns, half sovereigns, Krugerrands as well. Some really good coins there. And then we're straight onto the jewellery, which 
we have a massive selection uh, so mixed in with the jewellery and silver. Um, we'll just run through a few of them here. So here we have a massive selection of um, all sorts of Alberts and gold chains. Some of these pretty much all from um, one vendor as well, um, as gold price has gone so high. But if antique Albert chains are your thing, and you've been looking for one, well, we've got about 10 in this sale, so um, all different lengths as well. And some very really nice heavy bracelets and three color gold necklaces as well. That's a really good selection. Um, a few of the things on the pad here as well. Very unusual, modern 18 karat gold pearl and diamond pendant necklace on a rope twist chain. And that's probably Italian with the Baroque pearl. And I think the estimate on that one is about 1500 to 2000. Um, lovely, large emerald at the front here. This is um, the first lot in the jewellery section, which is lot 140. And it's a beautiful rectangular cabochon emerald. Don't usually see them that large. Um, and that's in an Art Deco 9 karat white gold setting as well. I think the estimate on that one is two to 400. But it could surprise us and go a bit more. Wouldn't be surprised at that. Um, and then we've got some other lovely emerald rings here. This one really is so vibrant. Lot 142. This is 18 karat gold, three stone emerald and diamond ring. But look at that. How vibrant is that emerald? Beautiful thing there. Uh, the estimate on that one is, I think, one to two thousand. Um, and then looking at some of the other diamond rings here, the main one to point out, lot 149, which is a three stone uh, diamond ring, central stone being a marquee's cut, and that is one and a half carats alone, the central diamond there, and then it's uh, flanked on either side by um, half carat pear cut diamonds. Beautiful um, colour and clarity. I think the central stone colour is an FG um, with a clarity of VVS2, I think. Um, but really nice ring. Not often that you see a marquise of that size. Estimate on that is four to six thousand. But again, could make more on the day, it just depends. Um, very unusual ring at the front here, lot 152. And this is in the manner of uh, a maker called Glenn Spiro. And he um, crafts and makes jewellery from Harrods. But this is a kinetic ring. So as you, um, as you flex your finger when it's on your hand, then the wings move up and down. And that's um, fully encrusted with diamonds. So it's just in the manner of Spiro. Um, and that has about three carats of diamonds as well set into that. Estimates should be between three and four thousand. Um, we've got a really interesting selection of silver here. Try to make a, get a few unusual bits together. Um, the first being this lot 289, which is a more of a military interest. Uh, and it's a shell case design for your cigarette. <laughs> Just a nice little collectible. Should be a hundred pounds or so. An unusual novelty. Lot 159. Really recognised design of this. Bonus points if you know who it is. It's by Stuart Devlin. Really nice. Um, and typical textbook Stuart Devlin um, parcel gilding to um, a really nice surround there as well. Uh, estimate on that should be between two and three hundred, something along those lines. And uh, if you really like loose leaf tea, then we've got a nice selection of things here as well. So first off, the tea caddy, which is Edwardian, um, and that's solid silver to keep your loose leaf tea in. And then we've got lot 158, which is a tea caddy spoon, and that's modelled as a jockey's cap. So that's a nice bit of fun to dig out your, your loose leaf tea from your tea caddy and then to put it into your tea strainer, which is on a stand as well. So once you've, once you've strained your tea, then you can pop it on the stand and any drips will go into the bottom there. But what a nice little selection of, of items to have together, all from completely separate vendors, but all work together. 
And uh, again, this another piece here, very unusual, lot 790. This is by Liberty & Co. Um, obviously a very recognised maker. And uh, this is their Simric line, which um, is typical arts and crafts. Um, and it's, it's solid silver with a lovely um, peacock enamel panel in the top there for a matchbox holder. What an unusual thing that is. Um, and then just to finish off, a few very fine pieces of jewellery here, starting off on uh, the 18 karat gold solid chain. You wouldn't have thought that's solid 18 karat gold there. With double curb links and a really nice seal on the end of it as well. Now this, at the moment, with gold price being so high, it's, uh, it's gold scrap price, which is horrible to think about for something like this. Um, but it's intrinsic scrap price value alone is around two and a half thousand pounds. So with that in mind, we'll be interested to see what that makes on the day. Um, and another unusual seal that I just picked out here, this is lot 226. It's nice just to see um, completely different designs on the tops of these seal fobs. And this one is hunting design with a little fox and pheasants by his feet. It's got a nice armorial crest on it as well. Um, this is probably one of the star lots from the sale, lot 154. And this is a Stuart Memento Mori morning ring. And as you might be able to see in there, under the rock crystal, a tiny little, little skull. Isn't that really sweet? And this one is dated on the band to 1760. It's got a lovely black enamel band um, with the memorial script on it. Estimate on this is one to 2,000, but there have been several that have made quite a bit more than that, so that's going to be one to watch, definitely. Um, and then some, just some really nice other pieces here. I'll just point out a few. Uh, so lot 151 which is a Georgian canateal and um, stone set um, jewellery set here. So you've got a nice large cross pendant, a ring and two brooches to go with it. Lovely uh, set there. These are, sort of, these are the sorts of things that you would see coming in individually, but as an entire set to stay together for that long, it's very unusual. So. Estimate of that is 800 to 1,000, but it could make a lot more. Some really nice other pieces there, but I'll, I'll save those and you have to look online. Some really nice images um, to look through, so have a browse through the catalogue. Um, I hope you've enjoyed it, but um, now it's time to look through the catalogue. So have a, do have a good look, favourite some things, and please be with us on the day, and um, we'll see you there. So it starts um, on Tuesday at 9.30 in the morning. Thank you very much.